Wolfgang William Van Halen, son of the late great Eddie Van Halen, former bass player of the band Van Halen, and now solo artist with his band Mammoth WVH, a band name that doesn't exactly roll off the tongue and looks way better in print than heard, but it's okay. It's his first uh, attempt at a solo record. I'm not sure what to expect, and I wasn't actually going to do an album review on it, but he released a couple songs, and I gotta admit, the early releases got my attention. Come join me, Tim Oates on Bass, as we dive into Mammoth WVH. If you've never been through one of these with me before, here's how it works. We're going to go through this together, track by track. At the beginning of each song, I'm going to put up a title card. That's your chance to pause the video. Go listen to the song while I listen to the song. Come back, unpause the video, and then you can hear my thoughts. You can think about your thoughts. It's like we're going through this together. Sound good? Sounds great. All right, let's dive right in. The first track is Mr. Ed. All right, Wolfie, coming right out with a, with a catchy, catchy little banger. I'm just going to go down like guitar. Check. Good guitar playing. Really good guitar playing. Bass work. Very good bass work. Very interesting bass work for the song, too. I think that's really important because a lot of times you can have a really good bass players that aren't playing to the song. Bass work plays really well to the song, which, uh, which I always appreciate on a different level. Uh, drums. Drums, they work. They hit. They punch you in the chest. They get you in. Uh, the vocals, actually, vocals are really good. I will say the lyrics are probably a little on the uh, simpler side, um, at least, you know, one song in. Uh, but the vocals are really good, and in fact, the harmonies are actually on point. Like, the harmonies sound great. There's a solo in there. I think it's really important as the listener to separate and realize that he is not Eddie Van Halen. There is no other Eddie Van Halen. So you can't expect an Eddie solo. And if you're able to do that, I think the solo checks out. So, uh, so far, so good. Um, let's get right to the next one. This is Horribly Right. Now in the last song, I was trying to think, what am I hearing? Like I was hearing an influence that wasn't Eddie. It was something else and I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it but I think I figured it out on this song. I think there's a lot of Seven Dust influence. That actually makes sense because there is a connection with Seven Dust. Uh, in fact, Wolfgang appeared on Clint Lowry, who's the guitarist of Seven Dust, uh, on his solo album God Bless the Renegades. Uh, he played some drums uh, on some of the tracks. Now one thing that I found on this song that I wasn't a huge fan of was the way the mix was. It felt a little forced, a little overdone. Uh, specifically, there's these parts where there's like harmonic type notes that are going back and forth in the ears. So you'll get a little bit over here, then it jumps over here and it goes back. And I'm normally a fan of like deliberate panning and like picking the location around you based on the way that the panning goes to kind of build a story and, and and make you feel a certain way and understand the music better. But this just felt like it was more of a trick because you could. You know, looking at the lyrics and hearing the song, I didn't feel like there was a need to do that. I didn't feel like it was additive. In fact, I found it kind of distracting. Let's get to the next one. This is uh, Epiphany. All right, so that one started out with a drum and bass intro, uh, which I would have liked, but I'll be honest, the bass tone, I wasn't a fan of. Now, this is tricky because I actually think the bass tone, it, what it is is the bass tone has uh, some grit on it. Uh, and that's a technique that is oftentimes used by bass players to kind of fill up the sound when, you know, perhaps the guitar is a little bit thin. The bass tone that he picked actually works really well in the mix when the entire band is playing. But hearing on its own with just drums in the intro, I, I thought there was a little too much. I would have cleaned up the tone a little bit for the intro, for those like solo parts. The synth work on this really helps to kind of create that unique song, right? Like that, that different feel amongst the album. The synth work is really uh, subtle, but tasty. I like it. 
the bridge is fire. It really kind of slowed down, took you back. And then, you know, you're in this different direction, but then it just brings it home. So far, this is my top choice. Epiphany is top song so far. All right, now let's get to the next song. Now, this is actually the song that made me go, all right, I definitely want to check out this album now. Um, because I'd, I'd heard some stuff and it was like, okay, it's good. This is the one that was like, I'm sold. I need to go check out the full album when it comes out. Uh, it's a video that was released. The video is actually pretty clever. So definitely check out the video. Uh, it's uh, Don't Back Down. All right, that one's a banger. If you haven't heard it, definitely check it out. Definitely watch the video, like I said as well. Because in the video, you can really see just how talented he is. You get to see him playing all the instruments. And if you're a musician, you can kind of tell if someone's faking. There's no faking in any of the instruments. The guitars, the singing, the bass, the, the drums. He's doing all of it. And you can tell by the way he's playing each of them in the video that... He, he understands technique, he understands performance, he understands each of these instruments intimately. Like, he is a talented, talented guy. Let's check out the next one. This is Resolve. He's doing a really good job of making sure that each song, for the most part, there's a couple that kind of sounded similar, but, you know, many of the songs so far have a really, really different feel, so they stand out amongst themselves, but they all feel like they belong on the same album. The bass work in the verse, fire. Absolute fire bass work. And it's not surprising, I mean, he's a bass player, but um, it's just so good, so good. Now, I've been a little critical of the lyrics you know, I've said that they're not bad, but they could be better. They're not quite as refined. But there's a good example in here uh, that I want to point out. And in the second verse, there's a line, you f***ing coward. And the reason that I have an issue with that line is it doesn't feel necessary. And certain bands, like, it's just cursing is a part of their style. Totally fine, right? Like, if that's the way you're going. And it feels very natural and it just makes sense with the music and the way you're singing. But if your vocals are primarily clean, when you do get some sort of a curse word in there, it needs to be the only one that makes sense because otherwise it just stands out. And that's kind of what I see here is I look at this and I go like, that didn't seem necessary. Like a stronger songwriter, a stronger lyricist would have been able to get the same emotion out without the effing in there. Just my opinion, take it or leave it. But let's get to the next one. This is, you'll be the one. Okay, so I finally have a contender for the bottom song. It's not a bad song. There's just a couple things in there that just didn't speak to me. The thing that really threw me off uh, was in the beginning, this like drum pattern that was trying to go for some sort of like offbeat, some sort of syncopation. Um, and I think it just missed the mark. It created this conflict with the way the guitars were playing. And instead of doing like an offbeat accent, which is what I think he was going for, I just felt that it was, uh, it was kind of forced and it felt wrong. Uh, there was a little bit more of that forced panning that I wasn't a fan of. It was like subtle. It was only like once I heard it and it was uh, with some mutes, some guitar mutes. And it was like, ch -ch -ch -ch, and I was like, eh. You know what? That's fine. Six songs in, only one that I'm like, no. That's uh, that's still really promising. Let's see what the next one looks like. This is Mammoth. All right, that's a, that's a good song. It's catchy. Could totally see this like uh, charting the top 40s, right? Like has like this uh, feel good quality. Like the lyrics are very like positive and motivating, kind of the sort of thing you might hear in uh, like a a school assembly. It's a really good song. The The guitar work and the intro really dug it. Um, just in general, it's a good song. Like, yeah. Listen to it. All right, let's, uh, let's check out the next one, which is Circles. Okay, I have another contender for the bottom song. This one, I really, uh, I really didn't connect with it at all. I found it kind of slow. I found it 
repetitive. It's a four minute song and you know, honestly at two minutes, uh, I went over to check the, the time and I was like, the song is dragging on way too long. And I was kind of shocked to find it was only two minutes in. So yeah, sorry, Wolfie, not feeling this one. It's okay, uh, let's see if the big picture is any better. Eh, you know, it wasn't a bad song. It just, to me, it's kind of a, like just a complete like middle of the road song. Like it's written good. It sounds good. If it, if it came on, I wouldn't skip it, but nothing really jumped out. All right, so we're on the 10th song. This is Think It Over. All right, let me think this over. No, I'm just kidding. That was a really good song. It's got that like pop rock feeling again. Uh, in fact, I think that he may be onto something with like this this style of song. He's got a couple on here where it's it's more like I said, pop rock. Really can appeal to the masses. Really, um, you can see on top forty charts. This may be what, where he really wants to focus. I mean, he's not calling me for advice, Wolf. If you want to talk music, I'd love to talk music with you, but uh, he's not going to see this. He's not going to call me. Here's the thing: like this style of music actually plays in perfectly with the way that he builds his lyrics. Uh, and yes, I'm saying pop lyrics tend to be a little more simple, a little bit less refined. It's the nature of pop songs. No one has ever said Ariana Grande writes amazing lyrics. Nobody on the face of the earth has ever said that. And yes, I know she's pure pop, not pop rock, but you know what I'm saying. All right, I'm getting, getting fired up about this album again. All right, next up is You're to Blame. That was a really good song. The chorus was the weakest part of the song. And the chorus was really good. I mean, I thought the intro was great. The verses were great. The solo, I thought, was phenomenal. I really felt like this solo here is the first time on this album that I heard his style start to shape up. And it, it, has, it has nothing to do with the other solos on the other songs. Like, the other solos are good. It's There's nothing wrong with them. But to to be able to capture kind of that feeling of like, oh, I get you as a musician, I get you as an artist through the way this solo is crafted, That that's a different thing. That's very different than just being able to play a really good solo. So um, yeah, I thought the song was really, really good. All right, just, uh, just three left. Next one is Feel. All right, this one caught me by surprise because I didn't think I was gonna like it. Like, I thought the intro fell a little flat. I got into the verse a lot. I thought it was really well done. I really enjoyed the music on the verse, uh, but the chorus kind of lost me. Wasn't a big fan of the, the chorus, mostly because of the lyrics. And yes, I know, talking about the lyrics again, sorry. Uh, lyrics are important in a song, uh, in my humble opinion, as a bass player that has 800 subscribers on YouTube. By the way, don't forget to subscribe. Let's help get that number up to 900, maybe even a thousand. How high can we go? But you gotta subscribe. Anyway, this was, um, yeah, this one surprised me because like I said, I, I, the chorus lost me, I wasn't feeling it, but the verse, really, uh, really good. So I kept getting brought back in by the verse and then the bridge, the bridge caught me out of nowhere. The bass work in the bridge, so good. And then it kind of got buried by the guitar and I was like, what are you doing? Like the bass needs to be up in the mix. And then I realized he was handing off this awesome bass work to the guitar. And then the guitar started having this really tasty little lick. And then the drums went nuts. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, well done. Next one is six minutes and 34 seconds. I think this is the longest track on the album. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's okay. Let's let's see what a six and a half minute song from Wolfgang Van Halen sounds like. This is Stone. Dude, so good. So good. It's six and a half minutes long. I almost didn't want it to end. I mean, literally, 
I checked the time at four and a half minutes and I was like, I can't believe it's almost over. I want to see this song live. And uh, I believe he's touring with GNR. Yeah, I was right. Guns N' Roses with special guest Mammoth WVH. Let's see if they're coming near me. I suggest you do the same thing. Go see if they're coming near you. Good Lord. <laughs> That's the cheapest. <laughs> Let's check out Distance. Uh, I know it's a good song. Um, just need to remind myself how good it is. And uh, then we'll wrap up the album. Yeah, let's do that. I was good until the end. I totally forgot about the voicemail at the end of that song and ah, oh, damn it. it. Gets me every time. Ah. Okay, I think I'm good to continue. I would say out of the 14 songs, there's probably like 10 or 11 really strong ones. And there and even the weaker ones, like there's only, there's only one that I was just really not a fan of. There's a lot of expectations on the son of Eddie Van Halen to put out some amazing music. Uh, and let's be honest, I think most people, if they're really being honest, would go, I doubt he can live up to it. Like how do you live up to a great like Eddie? And he pulled it off. And it's not because he lived up to it. It's not because he was trying to be his father. He wasn't trying to show, you know, look, I am little Van Halen. No. He stepped out as his own musician, as his own artist. Yes, of course, like, people are going to pay attention because his last name is Van Halen. But the music speaks for itself. It's a phenomenal player. Phenomenal songwriter. Uh, yes, I'm a little critical of some of the lyrics. It's okay, though. It's his first album. Like, give it a couple more albums. He's going to grow in that space. Like, I think when we get to, like, album three or four, there's going to be some mind-blowing songs, even more so than we already see. I hope you enjoyed the album with me, and you hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, please give it a like, you know drop comments. Let me know your thoughts of how good it is. If you disagree, if you didn't think it was good, um, or, you know, if you want to get on me about some of my critiques, people tend to like to let me know where they think I'm off the mark. That's totally fine. I love hearing from any and everyone. I also love it when you hit subscribe. So you should totally do that. In fact, if you're going to be critical, you should really subscribe, uh, because that way, you know, when I put out more stuff that you can be critical of. See it? See what I did there? Trying to get the subscribes, trying to get the clicks, trying to get the stuff. All right. Uh, thanks so much for the journey. You keep making beautiful music, and I'll see you in the next one.